So you discover that you're sacred. You contemplate yourself as a divine idea who has a soul that can birth reality into creation. And if you missed that video, beloveds, online, go back and check it out. But this song that we just sang together, the song that I invite you to continue to sing to yourself, possibly naked in a mirror. <laughs> it says, I will share this love. I will share, I will share, I will share this love that I am. Because this sharing is one of the ways that it becomes real, that it comes into form, yes? If you have a divine idea that just stays in your own mind, you're having maybe a little party with yourself in your own head, but it doesn't actually make its way into the manifest universe. You have to decide that you are going to be the through way. And when you decide, I am going to let this thing move its way through me and out into the world, it not only becomes a way that the world becomes a manifest reality of your divine idea that is love itself, so more love on the planet, yay, yeah. but it makes it more real to you. It makes it more real to you because you now have done a thing. I want you to think about a time in your life where you had a great idea and you followed through and it happened. Amazing, right? It feels really good. For all my artists in the room, right, when you have conceived of a thing and then you put it on the canvas or you put it in front of an audience, there is... I can't think of a greater feeling than that, right? And that is the way that then you begin to get into the realization of your divine ideas. But part of that is in this whole metaphysical teaching thing and this whole idea that you and I have a use of the power of creation and co-creators and shapers of change, Often, you and I get a little stuck thinking that I'm just going to go over here to my little bathroom mirror and I'm going to say all the positive, wonderful things about myself. I am so good. I am love itself. I am a divine idea in the mind of God. And then you're going to walk out of the bathroom, you're going to leave the mirror, wherever you did your affirmations, and you leave them in there. And then you're going to go over here and do life as if none of that is true. Yes? Making it real means that it has to come through you into manifest form. Touch it, something you can touch, something you can feel, that you can embody. We think that if we go to our little mirror, I'm going back to my mirror, I did all my affirmations. I said all the right things. I prayed all the right prayers. Why is this thing not in my life? Why are people jerk faces? Why do I not have enough money? Why isn't patriarchy just freaking crumbling? I said the prayers and the affirmations. Because that is one part of you. Your whole true nature needs you to be involved with all of you. You need to take the buzz you get out of that mirror affirmation time, out of your prayer time. The whole point of affirmation and prayer is to get you in alignment. It is not to tell God or the universe what to do. You are not mar giving marching orders to infinite life. Do your prayer practice. You are doing it. You are changing your thinking, changing your beliefs, getting yourself focused on right ideas, getting quiet enough to feel and hear and become intimate with the impulse of love itself in you so that you can get right. 
God's already right. The universe is already right. You get to get yourself in alignment so that you can have the experience that you want to be having. You know, toxic positivity is a thing. And I think it's a thing because we stop here. I'm just going to say all the right positive things. I did it for 10 minutes. Okay. And then I'm going to go over here and be a jerk face and talk terribly to myself and my self-talk. Believe that I'm unworthy. Believe that they are all the things. Guess what? Ten minutes, whole day. Ten minutes, whole day. Let's do the math. Metaphysics is kind of just math. Creating the world that we want to be living in starts with this math. The more time you spend over here thinking things that are untrue, that are little self thoughts, yes, ego-sized thoughts, that is where you put your energy. That is what you are giving your energy to, your power to. So the practice becomes taking your power back. The practice of making it real means you have to take your power back and let it move you. Let it move you in right thinking. Let it move you in right action. Let it move you in right word. Yes? We have this idea, put feet to your faith. If your faith stays in the bathroom mirror for 10 minutes, it is not moving through the process of your wholeness into form which is the only place you can experience it. If it never makes it out of idea form, if the water just stays vapor, can you drink it? Can you water your plants with it? Can you clean your dirty windows and let more light in with it? It has to make its way all the way into form which means you and I have to spend some time getting honest with ourselves about our time and how we're spending it, about our energy and about how we're spending it, about our thoughts and beliefs and how we are allowing them to dictate how we move in the world. Because that process is always happening. The universe is not on pause just because you forgot to get yourself together and get in alignment with it. The universe is going to keep rolling. Which means the universe that is you is going to keep rolling. And it's going to roll with whatever you plant, with whatever seed you put into the soil. It's going to roll. The practice becomes not telling God what to do, <laughs> not telling the universe what to do and micromanaging through your very intentions and thoughts. The practice becomes creating the conditions in your life with your time so that you can spend more of it in your true nature. so that you can get your power back from the negative self-talk. Get your power back through all the BS that the outer world is telling you is true. That's why we practice. The practice is for you. The practice is not for God. The practice is so that you can go, ooh, ooh. There is some stuff popping up in my garden, in my life, that I, 
I'm going to be a no to. Which means now I get to get intentional about where in my being can I more masterfully use my energy? Where can I kind of unclog the pipes so that good can more easily flow through me into form, into reality? This opportunity to become more masterful is always giving itself to you. So that's the good news is you can't like run out of time in the sense that today you only did your 10 minutes of affirmation and then you spent the rest of the day in BS. No problem. Tonight, try again. The next breath, try again. But there is finite time. This one wild and precious life, yes? There is finite time on these particular beautiful shapes of the divine. That you've been gifted. And so making that real to yourself, making that real in your experience, seems like a worthy use of your time. Yes? I want you to think for a moment what stepping into the flow of good more consistently, more often would look like in your life. Stepping into that flow of making it real so that you get to have the experience. Here's one of the things that I'm going to offer. You and I give a lot of outer conditions, other people, our power. And the one of the ways that we do that is sort of the, the obsessing about what they are doing, or what that is doing. Yeah? So I want, one of the examples that I see a lot, and a lot of people come to me with prayer requests and ask for counseling, and can I sit with you and tell you about a thing? And, you know, and I listen. And there's a lot of, if they would just. Anybody know that sentence? If they would just act right. If my kid would just stop blah. If my partner would just stop blah, or just do X. And we spend time on those thoughts, right? We will, we will like paint a picture in our minds of what they should be doing and not doing. We will get on our social media and tell everybody about it. We will go find memes that tell it better. What if you decided that your peace, your happiness, your contentment, your life satisfaction was no longer dependent on them? What if you decided your freedom, your liberation was no longer dependent on outer circumstances? That you pull in your power back. Pull in your power back. Because when you've decided that your happiness is dependent on somebody else's behavior, you just went, here, let me give you all my power. I'm just going to give it. Here, have it. But when you become more intimate and aware of the truth of who you are, that you are an entire universe, that you have the power of the divine working through you in every moment of your life, you begin to realize that, do you, boo? I'm good. Literally, I'm good. You begin to have masterful use of your own energy, which is your greatest power of creation. 
you begin to create a really lovely feedback loop in yourself, which is like, wait, let me, um, you can't have my power. Do you know that I am divinely made? Do you know that I am literally appointed and anointed by the divine to be here right now to do me? You do you. Go on with your bad self. Because you cannot have my peace. You cannot have my joy. You cannot have my wisdom unless I so choose to share it. Yes? Do you know who I, I believe knows really, really well about this? I was listening to Sonia Renee Taylor some time back in a video, and she was talking about the technology of blackness. And I was like, go on, Renee, talk about it. She was talking about the technology of the capacity to stay true to your whole true nature regardless of outer circumstance and slavery and folks who decided to laugh and sing and dance anyways. There was nothing out here that was gonna steal that joy. And every single one of us has the possibility to conjure up that power, that technology. And when we do, and we let it move through us, through song, through dance, through whatever expression is your unique, authentic expression to, to create, it becomes not only more real and alive on this planet, but it becomes more real to you. Right? You have somebody in your life who says a thing, like a thing, and you're like, Tch, mm. can't steal my joy, can't steal my peace. I am wholly anointed and appointed on purpose in this very body, as I am in all my divine glory and quirks and things. And every time I have one of those moments, every time you allow yourself to stay grounded regardless of circumstance, regardless of what your sweetheart is doing, what your kid is doing, what your boss is doing, regardless of what your neighbor is doing, what your city counselor is doing, when you know yourself to be a whole universe, not only can they not shake your peace, but it also gives you the energy, the power, to move in right action and address whatever the thing is. Right? Anybody um, um, lose their shit on a regular basis? Yeah. You know who helps me lose my shit really, really easily? My child. So we all have places to grow. As they say in the black church, God's still working on me. But you know when you're doing it, right? It's like the, ah, it flies out of your mouth and you're like, oh, that should not have been said. But that's the practice, right? Having even awareness that you have lost your shit. And then you go and be like, come here, let me come, let me come clean that up. I'm going to make the apology call. Because I know what it feels like to be out of congruence with myself. I know what it feels like when I've let my ego, Atman, missing self be in the driver's seat. And you know I know how that feels? is because I choose to practice awareness. I choose to sit still and feel myself. I choose to get quiet and hear myself so that I have more intimate understanding and discernment about who's in the driver's seat. 
And so that when that happens, and it's going to happen, when I act out of alignment with my wholeness, and I say a thing or do a thing or hurt somebody's feelings or whatever the thing, then I simply, I don't, I don't get into like a lashing. Oh, I'm a horrible human being, I've done a thing. I hold myself accountable. And I clean it up quickly, if I can. Because I don't want to ruminate on it, right? I don't want to go to bed like, I'm a horrible person and I was awful to my child. That is not fun for me. I don't know that that's fun for anybody. So clean it up. Acknowledge it. Discern it. And the more you and I practice that, again, spirit moving through us, the more you and I practice, like, ooh, that thing that just came through me, not so great. I don't, I'm, let me, mm-mm. You and I will be able to discern, we'll be able to take those pauses and those beats before we let that little self act out. Because one of the things that Margaret Wheatley, who wrote um, Leadership in the New Science and Who Do We Choose to Be, a really incredible thinker in our time, highly recommend her books, just bite-sized pieces. Um, she talks about one of the spiritual calls of this time is to transcend our biology. There's a lot of talk out there about trauma and trauma-informed care and trauma-informed education, and I am for all of that. I really am, because we, we need to be better to one another, and I think that helps us do it. But what we cannot do is let our trauma in the driver's seat. That's how we begin re-traumatizing other people in ourselves. Right? So we have to transcend that biology. We have to transcend that amygdala brain who's like, thinks that that person said a thing and now I'm going to die. Which is inaccurate. But that little sweet ego self of yours does not know that. And so the practice becomes getting so intimately aware with your whole true nature that you can be at choice around how you use your energy. You can be at choice about who's in the driver's seat. And if you know, like I know, when I am more likely to be an asshole. I haven't eaten well, haven't slept well, cheated on my meditation time, did not get on my yoga mat. That's a day when y'all should probably just keep clear. <laughs> because that's the practices it takes for me to create the condition to stay in alignment with my whole true nature. And the more you and I do that, the more you and I have those moments of like, wow, he just did something that is Wow, and I did not say a thing. I handled that beautifully. I just took a deep breath and listened and said, my darling, I love you to the moon and back. I'm going to talk to you later. Every time those tiny moments of good come through you, you create a pathway that makes it easier for more and more and more good increasing that feedback of good flow. And now you have stepped into the flow of affluence and abundance. Because that's how that works. You give the good that you are and it just flows back to you. That's just the nature, the law of flow. And so the more you do that, the more masterful the use of your energy becomes the more of life you can include in that flow and the greater and greater good you get to experience. You have to give it, though. You have to be willing to flow into that good as a practice. And not just a practice for you, but a practice for your community, your relationships, your family, your workplace, the, that awareness just becomes your way of being. Who's in the driver's seat? 
How am I feeling? If they say a thing today, am I going to go off? Just being in this relationship with your own true nature, the little self and the big self, right? Knowing what you need. What are the conditions you need to create? And so that's what I'm going to ask you to think about right now. What do you want to experience more of in your life? I'm going to give you another practice. What do you want to experience more of in your life? Think about it. Peace. Kindness. Generosity. Harmony. Pleasure. So I want you to actively now be on the lookout for it. I want you to actively be on the lookout for it because as you begin to become more intimate and aware of the truth of your whole nature, guess what's going to happen outside of you? The things that are resonant with your nature are going to find their way to you. You're going to notice them more often. Unless you left it in the bathroom, which we do sometimes. <laughs> and you're over here making up stories. So one of the ways you can begin to make it more real in your experience is to decide on a daily basis, so here's the homework, to decide on a daily basis, I'm going to leave the house today, I'm going to go get on my Zoom camera, whatever your situation, and I'm going to actively look for more peace. I'm going to look for the things that resonate with peace, because that's what I want more of in my life. And then at the end of the day, I'm going to write it down. What did I see? What was an interaction I had that grew peace in me? What looked like peace to me today? Who looked like peace to me today? Whatever that thing is for you. And you're going to make the intention every morning, and you're going to write it down every night. I guarantee you, within hours, you will have an experience of more of whatever that thing is. Because you've simply decided to more masterfully use your energy. 